dog and human clashes as old as recorded history, but the oldest dog self-defense case that I've found is Reynolds v. Phillips, a case from 1883, Illinois. The cause of action? Trespass. Probably said trespass back then for killing a dog. The court instructed the jury that an individual has no right to kill another man's dog unless the dog's caught chasing sheep, unless it's been bitten by another dog, which is mad or supposed to be so, or when the dog is ferocious, meaning that you could only kill a dog if it was biting sheep, if it was rabid, or in self-defense, if the dog was accustomed to attacking people. The Court of Appeals reversed the trial court on the jury instructions, succinctly holding that a man's not bound under such circumstances to stop and investigate as to the antecedent habits of the dog. This is why I love old cases, the antecedent habits of the dog, the old language. If a person's attacked by a dog without provocation, then self-defense is justifiable on that basis alone is ultimately where the court ended up. And that's a good thing because the second most common phone call I get from U.S. Law Shield members on the U.S. Law Shield emergency member hotline is, oh my God, I just shot Rover. Dog shootings are right behind road rage. I'm not making this up for emergency calls that I get, and I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is that almost all of these dog self-defense cases will involve felony charges, at least theoretically. Let's explore the bad news before I tell you the good news. By the way, if you want a U.S. Law Shield membership, use the link in the description. You get a few free months, and my range, Neutral Ground Gun Company, gets a small commish for you signing up. One of the worst dog defense cases I have ever seen, at least on the trial level, came out of, and this may shock you, bear with me, California. That's where former Angeles County Deputy Pamela Lee, no, no, not her, but that would be awesome, was walking her senior Rottweiler, and I mean this was an old dog. Guy hadn't learned any new tricks in a while, according to witnesses who said the dog was old and lumbering. According to witness testimony in the afternoon, of January 8, 2003, Lee and her dog were walking when they were accosted by two smaller dogs who were barking and following them. One of the witnesses testified they saw Lee pull her gun out, point it at the dogs and yell at them, and then put it back in her purse. She actually did this a few times over the next few minutes while the dogs were barking at her until finally Lee produced her firearm one last time and cracked a round off into, unfortunately, a parked car, but it did scare the dogs away. This happened in broad daylight near a strip mall, so there were a handful of witnesses. Some of the witnesses testified the dogs were barking at Lee. Some of the witnesses testified that they weren't barking. Some testified that they were stalking Lee and her dog. Some testified that they weren't. One witness said the bigger dog looked like a German Shepherd. Another witness said it looked like a chihuahua. If anything, this should scare the shit out of you to know that a group of people who are responsible for whether or not you go to prison will have completely conflicting stories and they'll all be sure that their version of events is correct. So, of course, somebody pops one off, police are going to get called, bunch of cops show up, they all point guns at Lee, make her put her tits in the dirt while they disarmed her, i.e. they took away her purse. It sounds like the state hired some butthole named Don Preston as a firearms expert, which means that taxpayers paid some dude hundreds of dollars an hour to get this guy in the stand to testify against a fellow ex-cop and tell people that in his professional opinion... Miss Lee, by discharging a gun in public, presented a danger. I should mention, by the way, that Lee was a deputy for six years and had at least 132 hours of firearm training, according to the record, which is probably more than most of you have. Lee said that she likes to carry a handgun because she used to do undercover narcotics work. Pretty rugged. Damn, Lee. She said she was worried that she could be recognized by a dealer that she'd put in jail, which actually happened to her one time at the mall. She'd also been severely bitten by stray dogs two other times before and accosted by two pit bulls in a third incident. In other words, this was the fourth time that she was attacked by dogs. At this point, I think she deserves to open carry a backpack flamethrower, in my humble opinion. Lee said she was confronted by a Rottweiler mix and a German Shepherd mix the day of the incident, both of them baring their teeth and barking at her and her dog. She said that she was stuck on a particular area of the sidewalk for up to five minutes. The dogs weren't letting her get by. She tried to get passerby to help. 
No one did. I mean, of course, California. Traffic prevented her and her elderly dog from escaping across the street. While she produced her firearm from her purse, several times pointed at the dogs, yelled at them. These dogs must not have had guns in the house growing up or didn't speak English because they didn't get the hint. When the dogs finally started approaching her in a crouched position as if preparing to spring on Ms. Lee, she cracked a shot off into poor Juan Leon's gold SUV. Cops arrested her on the walk home. Lee was charged with gross negligence in the discharge of a firearm, which is a serious felony. She was also charged with attempted cruelty to an animal, illegally carrying a concealed firearm, carrying a loaded gun, and vandalism. The attempted cruelty and the vandalism counts were dropped by the state before trial, and at Lee's first trial, the jury dismissed the concealed handgun charge. However, there was a hung jury on the firearm discharge count, which means that there was a second trial. At Lee's second trial, by the way, think of all the attorney's fees at this point, Lee was convicted of felony negligent discharge of a firearm. A felony! Importantly, the judge wouldn't allow the jury to hear instructions on self-defense because the judge ruled that self-defense only applied in dangerous encounters with other human beings, not dogs. Lee appealed the case. The appellate court opinion is 13 pages long, so it's a good one. Let's go over the elements of gross negligent discharge in California, probably similar to your state. Number one, willful discharge of a firearm. Number two, in a grossly negligent manner. Number three, in a way that could result in injury to another person. That's probably why the state hired an expert to prove that third prong that this was dangerous or could have posed a risk of harm to other people. Unfortunately, again, the judge ruled that the jury could not be instructed on self-defense because the DA convinced the judge that this only applied to human encounters, not with animals. Fortunately, the Court of Appeals disagreed in this lengthy opinion, and I applaud the Court of Appeals here because they actually did their own research into dog defense law. I remember being a clerk at the federal courthouse in the Northern District of Florida in Pensacola, enjoying performing my own research in addition to analyzing the cases provided to me by counsel. The court said that they discovered that while most self-defense cases involve human-on-human -human attacks, indeed a surprising, their word, surprising number of self-defense cases arise from attacks by dogs. And the court observed, I'm quoting, Courts across America have assumed the applicability of the defense of self-defense when defendants asserted it in response to charges involving cruelty to animals. The court cited a number of cases. In its conclusion, the court said, with the exception of the case at bench, it appears that courts uniformly recognize that a person has the right to use reasonable self-defense confronted with an aggressive dog and the trial court ruling on jury instructions, that is, omitting the self-defense instruction, was therefore erroneous, and that's the truth. The good news is that almost every court should allow you to raise self-defense as a legal defense in a dog attack case. The bad news is you could always end up like Ms. Lee. You defend yourself against a dog. There's nothing stopping the cops or the prosecutor from throwing the book at you, taking you to a trial that maybe you'll win. The charges in the Lee case are similar to what I've seen in other dog cases. Cruelty to animals, which is often a felony, negligent or wrongful or gross negligent discharge, which can also be a felony. This means that in most, if not all states, you're looking at at least a minimum of a year in prison if you're convicted of a charge of defending yourself against a dog, like uh, cruelty to animals, wrongful discharge, whatever. But at a minimum, you could be jailed and bailed and then you're going to have to hire a scumbag attorney like me to help you out. going to cost you a lot of money between bail and attorney's fees. Now, for most of you law-abiding citizens out there, I've never actually personally seen this happen. In fact, in the time I've been representing Law Shield clients since 2018 or so, the only time I remember a dog shooting charge sticking is when we found out that a guy who shot at a dog was being attacked by his girlfriend's dog right after he had just got done beating his girlfriend. So he was charged with domestic abuse and cruelty to animals and wasn't allowed to raise self-defense as a legal defense for that reason. Now, on the other hand, I would say I get about one phone call every couple of months where someone shoots a dog or shoots at a dog with good cause, and I can usually help them land the plane with the cops over the phone. January 1, 2020. Lindsay had just opened a bottle of champagne for New Year's Day mimosas. I mean, within 30 seconds of popping that fine J. Roger, 
I get a phone call on the hotline from a dude who just shot and killed an off-leash husky after the husky attacked the man and his dog. Of course, the loose husky's owner shows up. This always happens. They show up pissed off right when the cops are like, man, what'd you do to my dog, son of a bitch? But fortunately, I'm talking to the member before the police show up. The member did the right thing. He contacted law enforcement right after the shooting, told him what happened as briefly as possible. I was just attacked by a dog. I shot him. I was defending myself. I was afraid for my life. Second phone call, U.S. Law Shield emergency line. He gets me first thing in the morning, New Year's Day. I tell him he's got two options. One, he can say nothing to the police, wait for me to show up, but he was three or four hours away, but then he'd probably get charged, booked, sent to jail. Or option two, I can tell him what to say to the cops and I can help him land the plane. The man listens to me very intently, speaks to the cops, does a great job. I can hear him over the phone. He not only gets cut loose right then and there, but that pissed off dog's owner, that guy, he got cited for violating leash laws, and my client was listed as the victim on the police report. Now, my guy was carrying a Springfield XD, though lucky for him, that's just a crime against morality. Every single one of my dog cases, except for Captain Girlfriend Beater, have turned out this way. No jail, no charges, but then again, I would say that anyone smart enough to have a concealed handgun policy or a lawyer is probably smart enough to make the right decisions during a dog attack and not put themselves in a vulnerable position. And you never know when you could end up like Pamela Lee if you cross the wrong prosecutor. I'll leave you with this. Many of us have heard the saying that it's good to have something in between a crossword and a gun. My buddy John Correa told me he always carries pepper spray for this exact dog attack scenario. And I've actually run into countless people over the years who've had to pepper spray dogs. I highly recommend carrying pepper spray in addition to your firearm, whether you're dealing with a mad dog or a pissed off under the overpass hobo, whatever, because it will severely lessen your potential criminal exposure if you use that instead of a gun. But if you forget your pepper spray, don't forget your gun and your lawyer. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know in the comments. I'm not your lawyer. This is not legal advice. Stay safe out there.